this hangout is now live. Hello, this is Viviana from Viviana Enchantress of Books and Kelly from Books and Kisses. And we bring Hi. to you... <laughs> See there, she just popped in. Um, and here we are bringing to you from our audio book loving series, narrator Iggy Tomas. Hello. Hi. Hi, welcome. Good to be here. Good to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. So, um, so we've been talking about audio books and kind of catching up here. So I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Um, sure. Throughout the process of our audiobook loving series, we've learned that sometimes the author is heavily involved in the process and sometimes they're not involved at all. Can you share with us how the author narrative relationship has begun with you? You know, for the most part, uh, they're not involved, which is kind of good and bad. It, it, it gives me a bit of freedom to take some artistic license because the voices that I create are never going to be the ones in their head, but hopefully I can surprise them and make something kind of fun. Um, but recently, I, uh, one of the authors in your series, Heidi Cullinan, uh, we have kind of struck up a relationship, so we've been going back and forth a little bit, and we're collaborating on a book that's about to come out called Nowhere Ranch, and so she had a little bit more say in that, which, which was kind of cool. Yeah, that is cool. Heidi Rocks. He's a yeah, really cool author. Interesting. So what sort of information does the author provide you? Part so well, with that being said, when they do have that conversation with you, do they what kind of information do they provide you with? They it's it's oftentimes, you know, what they don't want to hear. If they've heard auditions for um, the narration and people kind of fall into certain traps with dialects or, or different rhythms or something. So they'll, they'll kind of uh, lay it out that way. Um, but yeah, they don't, they don't get terribly specific. Most of my job is to, is to read the text and find all, as many clues as I can from the actual text of if any time they reference the character's voice or... Um, if they give any sort of adjectives on inflection and stuff like that. And then, you know, once I have a general sense of the book, I can have an understanding of the overall tone and uh, if it has a sense of humor and if so, how the rhythm of that. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm mostly just taking uh, all my cues just from what's, what's on the page. Okay. So you mentioned Heidi Cullinan's... Um, and I first found you through her Love Lesson series, which yes. I originally read and fell in love with. And then, of course, you kind of love the narrator, so you're like, what else have they narrated? Um, and so found out that you were narrating the Hitman series um, mm -hmm. with Jessica Clara and Jen Fredericks, um, which I also had already first read and then felt, you know, fell in love with that series. And I'm going, hoo-hoo. Um, but each of those series are completely unique in the characters that are portrayed and written, and they have different dialects and different, you know, accents and stuff like that. How do you go about selecting how each of these characters are going to sound like? Yeah, no, I mean, you've brought up... I'm, I'm so happy that I'm involved in both those series because they couldn't be more different, and it just uh, allows me to do all kinds of fun stuff. Um, a lot, you know, it, both, both of those, uh, all three of those writers... Uh, they're so specific and they're very clear in their characterization. So uh, there's a lot given to me just through the text alone. Um, you know, with the there's a big battle with the Hitman series is 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 obviously the the dialects play a big role in that because I'm a Russian hitman and and a couple of them and uh, so I'm doing you know in those books there'll be a lot there'll be scenes with. A, six or seven Russian guys, so I'm trying to find all these different ways to sound like a Russian guy. And um, and then Heidi is, you know, a on a completely different uh, quality to those books because um, they're more kind of less action-packed and more just kind of uh, relationship-based, I guess. And uh, and she's, but she's very, very specific with the voices uh, on, on a lot of the characters. And then others, um, I think of, so there's one character, uh, Dr. Williams in the Love Lessons series, and uh, she didn't give too much on that one, so um, I, I got to take a, a bit of liberty with the voice. Um, I, I used one of my friend's fathers as an example because he has just such a very specific voice, and uh, and Heidi commented on it afterwards that it uh, 
it was not how she'd expected it, but ultimately she she really liked it. So I was glad that that, that worked out. But it's mostly just you know finding ways to uh, find the essence of the character and messing around with pitch and resonance and um, uh, tempo and all of that stuff, and also just trying to keep it entertaining and uh, and differentiation between the different characters can be can inform the decisions also. Yeah, because like I said, I've listened to both series, and it's not like I'm listening to the Hitman series and I'm going, hey, that sounds kind of like the characters from The Love Lesson. It was like totally different people. Mm -hmm. So it, it helps when you're listening to these characters. Like, it's not like I'm going, hey, that sounds like so-and-so from this book. It's I, somewhat, Again, it's like completely, utterly different people, so that really says a lot about what the narrator is doing, so that's awesome. Good, good. Yeah. And I think it says a lot about the authors because, you know, they, the more specific they are in creating that world, I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to get kind of swept up into it. And um, hopefully, you know, everybody is visualizing the story as it goes along and they're, they're seeing very specific people, I guess, is the goal. So in both series cases, these characters from book one will then appear again in another book two or three. Mm -hmm. How do you go about managing or what is the process of that you go through to remember what the character from the previous book sounds like because it, you know, it's important for them to sound exactly the same. How do you go about doing that? A luxury, so for those books for example, I do, I recorded those at my home studio so I have the luxury of that I, I can document where I, I uh, where those characters fall in the book and so I can go back and listen which I've, I've gotten, I've gotten myself it's been harder when I've uh, recorded at specific producer studios and then I can't have that resource and so I'll take really specific notes on sound you know like what is this character who does this character sound like or I'll make notes on uh, resonance or just like little things to kind of jog my memory but sometimes I, if there's a long gap between books and I don't have the ability to look it up I'll, I'll, I'll have to track down the book um, but for the most part, you know, the the more specific the character is, that I can kind of, I can kind of remember generally how it goes. Um, but it's good to be able to, to check in and, and keep it as specific as possible. And there's some there's sometimes where a character appears in a book, and then you kind of don't really expect to see them again, um, and then they'll show up, you know, three books later, and you really have to scramble a little bit to remember what you did. Speaking of the different characters and their special voices and tones, can you tell us a little bit about voicing Giles from Fever Pitch? Yeah, that yeah, he's he's an interesting one. Uh -huh. That that's a good example of of Heidi being really specific. She talked about his voice. And I don't have it in front of me, but I think that it. She referenced referenced that it was a bit uh, nasal, and mm -hmm. she talked about. Uh, I can't remember if she said uh, a lisp or a sibilant s, and, and and she referenced that kind of people uh, gave the character a hard time um, because he kind of sounded stereotypically gay, uh, which was an interesting obstacle because I I don't want to veer into stereotype, um, so I I really definitely had to mess around a lot with that voice um, and kind of tried to find some source material to make it to make it somebody who's really specific and and believable uh, but it was ultimately like those are kind of my favorite characters because um, if you find a voice that's that's really unique and kind of surprises yourself it's just more fun to do and so I, I really enjoyed uh, narrating for him and I think he'll he'll return in, in the next book so that's good it won't be the last of Giles good to know so can you tell us a little bit about that narrating process that you go once you're given the book, like what does your process look like? Yeah, I uh, so I definitely do a full pass through the book, uh, just kind of uh, trying to get a general sense of how the book flows, what what it's building up to, kind of what are the ebbs and flows of the narrative, um, and then I'm also going through while doing that, and I do everything on my iPad, so I'll mark all the characters with different colors to differentiate them and I'll take notes um, just give myself uh, heads up and cues when characters are coming and to remind myself how they sound and uh, 
and then there's you know my I don't have the greatest vocabulary in the world, so I'm always looking up pronunciations of various words. And if the so for the Hitman series, a big task for those are <laughs> they often have foreign languages. Uh, so I, I track down. I have to track down a friend who uh, speaks Russian or uh, Portuguese. Uh, those are the two real challenging challenging ones so far. Um, so that you know just requires extra work. I spend a lot of time on this website Forvo, which is a pronunciation thing, and then Merriam-Webster, and then YouTube. I'm so I'm constantly because if if it's a a person's name, you kind of have to find a source where somebody says it out loud and. So yeah, a lot of tracking down pronunciations, but then just getting a general feel of how the book flows and making decisions about characters, and uh, and then I, once I've done all the prep, I get in the booth and and try to let it rip. Which uh, you know, it's uh, because I have a home studio, which is a, a good luxury that it allows me to work at all different hours uh, to get a project done. I try to do. A good chunk at once, just to build up some momentum and, and have a good flow to the storytelling. Uh, but you know, juggling different jobs and stuff that it, uh, I, I'll be recording late into the night sometimes, and then early in the morning. And, but yeah, it. Uh, I would I would prefer that over going in. And if you do it at a in a producer studio, it's usually they block out a few days and. Uh, it's kind of a marathon of, of reading and recording. So I get a little bit more flexibility, which is nice. Okay. So authors have the writing cave. Do narrators have something similar? You mentioned a booth. Um, so if you do, what, is, what does yours look like? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, it's, it's, it's evolved over, over the course of my work. It started off and was, was pretty, pretty janky and it, it you know, I, my equipment has gotten more sophisticated, but also, you know, uh, I live in New York mo most of the year, and, uh, you know, it's not the quietest of cities, so you're constantly finding ways to try to buffer from the, buffer the out, outside noise. And now my booth is pretty good and does a lot of the work for me, but before it was just a series of, I built this kind of weird nook cave in the corner of my room with uh, PVC pipes and moving blankets that it wasn't great. I, mean, I was constantly stopping for buses and uh, loud neighbors and dogs barking and uh, going back and trying to fix all that. But uh, now it's, yeah, it's, it's so nice to have a booth. Before we had the booth, I, also, uh, my, I had a downstairs neighbor who was like a music anthropology professor at some college, and uh, he was constantly blasting like really loud, like tribal music and <laughs> xylophone trance music, and it would as soon as it came on, I was like, "Well, that, that's the end of my day," and uh, I couldn't record anything. So now it's good that I'm I'm free from the wrath of my neighbors. Got it. Well, I have four dogs, so I can understand the the barking. It's like, well, there there goes the movie pause moments. Okay, there you go. Get it out. Get it out. Um, yeah. No, it can be it can be a pain with those distractions, but yeah. Oh, but the actual booth itself, it, it's pretty it's pretty boring. It's uh, kind of gloomy in there. I need to find a way to spice it up because I spend so much time there. I kind of, you know, I call it just the box. You know, I'm going to and the box, which reminds me of isn't in Hook, the beginning of Hook, Glenn mm -hmm. Close's character gets thrown into a box full of uh, snakes and. Other so it it's take I need to rename it so that it's much more fun and inviting than something that sounds like a pirate torture. I was gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's supposed to be fun at least. Yeah, you know, because as listeners we love what you do. <laughs> you know, we kind of don't want you now to kind of like imagine going, oh poor thing, he's in the box. <laughs> oh, Iggy's in the box. Iggy's in the box. <laughs> Now I'm gonna have to come up with a banner that says "Poor Iggy's in the box" or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Get in the box. <laughs> no, I don't want. I don't want my listeners to feel sorry for me. It's not so bad. Not so bad, no. Yeah. But here's a fun question, because Kelly and I have been wondering, as a narrator, do you get the question of, "Oh, say it in so and so's voice," and how often? Um, and specifically, do you get a specific qu a voice that you get asked often? 
Um, well, you know, besides instances like this, my <laughs> relationship with my listeners is 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 so remote that uh, I don't you know run into them all that much. Uh, but when if somebody has heard the book, you brought up Giles. He's a very popular voice, and uh, it's probably more more common with when I, I I say that I'm doing a book in a dialect. People, of course, want to hear my Russian dialect and my Portuguese dialect, and you know, so th that people are entertained by um, jumping into those those voices. I think the most of just uh, you know and. The more kind of extreme, the better. So if I if I mention that I'm doing Jamaican or something, they'll of course want to hear that. Just to, you know, uh, keep it's it's like a good party trick, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, your your Russian is really good. <laughs> good. It is. It's funny when I when I record those books. If I'm going for a long stretch, I have to stop because four hours of a Russian dialect. It just it starts to become. It evolves into other strange things. You know, <laughs> I'll start to sound. You know, it'll it'll get Eastern European, and then it becomes, and then it's always inevitably it takes a turn to like Caribbean or something, and then that that's when I know the day is over. Oh, uh, see, that's where it you know, would be one of those things. Like, if you were a fly on the wall, it'd be like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> those would be the bloopers. Yeah. Oh, there's plenty of them. Yeah. See, those would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. now I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Of all the authors that you've narrated for, which one has been your favorite and why? Oh. Oh, you're going to turn people against me. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not... Well, I have to be somewhat diplomatic because you have multiple of my authors <laughs> in your series. But, and so we've talked a lot about Jessica and Jen and, and Heidi and... and their books are all fantastic, and I have such a great time doing them. I think that uh, they're just so different. I, I love the, how action-packed the Hitman series are. It's like you know, it's like a good, good action movie. Um, but I, I'll admit that I am very—I've become very attached to some of the characters in, in Heidi's series. So I think uh, those I. I, I uh, Look forward to on a different level, I guess, just because she just writes. She's just got some really endearing characters in there that you just really, really want to root for. And I think that's part of what Heidi does so well is she, she, uh, you know, creates characters going through stuff that that it's so easy to feel great compassion for them. Um, but I love what. Back to diplomacy. I love that I get to do. I get to do. Such a diversity of material. It's it's really I'm I'm very lucky in that sense. No, but that's one of the reasons why I do love you as a narrator is that you do go so well with both. I mean, the Hitman series is full of action, mm -hmm. and Heidi's books are very like you were saying on the relationship and on the emotional, and you do such a phenomenal job with the action stuff. Plus, also with the Hitman series, you do um, it's a co-narration. So mm -hmm. you're doing it with another narrator that's a female, and so it's also a little different there. So you do a really good job with them both. Uh, so it was very diplomatic of you on that answer. Um, mm -hmm. But I still give you credit, but okay, fine, whatever. Well, you, <laughs> you mentioned that the Hitman, seri Hitman series is uh, with a, a female narrator as well, who his name is Kasha Kensington. Mm -hmm. And and I that you know you talked about whether I work directly with the authors. That you, uh, I probably work more directly with if it, it's a co-narration. We have to go back and forth a lot on different voices and trying to maintain some consistency. So I've gotten to chat with Kasha quite a bit. Are you guys? But do you guys narrate at the same like are you at the same time, or is like you're in your own? Are you in the box by yourself, or and is she somewhere else? Are you guys talking? I mean, how does that work on a? Yeah, it's 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 done uh, remotely. So uh, we have to kind of calibrate our studios to to have the same uh, sound quality, so that the book is consistent, um, which takes a little bit of finagling. But it's all it's all done remotely. We're not we're not in the same room, and we're on we're on different schedules. But uh, uh, and then yeah, I did this other series, um, the Dirty Past series, that uh, is a another. Uh, 
Lydia Dornay uh, narrates those, and so it's the same situation. We're we're in different places, and uh, we get to go back and forth and, and exchange voices, which is those are funny phone calls. Well, we're trying to figure out how somebody sounds. I'm sure if you were fly on wall uh, on a, on the wall for those, we would sound like crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been interesting with Kelly and I doing this series because, you know, she's on the West Coast, I'm on the East Coast, and, you know, we have global, you know, connections where we're either IMing or sending a text message, or sometimes we'll get on the com camera, so considering this is not an audiobook situation, but the sheer volume of communication that she and I have been having to do for this series alone, I cannot even imagine having to do something like an audiobook where accents and because you're both doing both the male and the female mm -hmm. um, on the audiobooks and you know when there's accents involved and there's the different dialects and name pronunciations if you're going Nikolai and she's going Nikoli or however it's going to be done it's, it's not going to it's going to mess it up for the reader so, yes yeah it, it's it's going to be interesting so it, it's definitely that's a lot of communication <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> there's a lot of back and forth but luck, luckily we we also have editors too, so I think I think on one I can't remember exactly which name it was, but one of those Hitman series uh, books, there's all of those Russian characters and they have mm -hmm. the Russian pronunciations, and I think I, one of us said the names differently, so we had to go back in and and fix that, uh, which is not as hard as it sounds, but yeah, it is. There's a lot of minutia that we have to wade through, but but it's worth it. I mean, it's fun and it's and I like collaborating because it's. You can you can start to go you can get a little lonesome when you're recording alone. <laughs> yeah, but it's been interesting. I've seen it where um, when the co narration occurs, where you, like for example with the Hitman series, you read the chapter and you do both male and female, and then she reads it from her perspective and does both. But there have been some instances where the interaction is at the same time. So you would be reading just the males, and she would be reading just the females. That hasn't been happening a whole lot lately, and that's a different dimension that I'm like, oh, I hope that happens, you know? Yeah, I've never done anything like that. That would be really cool, but I think for that, you would have to be in a booth together, or, or else there just wouldn't be any flow, I would imagine, um, which mm -hmm. would be pretty exciting. Uh, it's, it sounds fun, because when you're that interaction stuff, when the people are bickering, they're almost the interruption is real. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, and then it becomes much more like, you know, stage or film acting uh, as opposed mm -hmm. to just simply narration. Yeah, well, just hinting it out there, just a hint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I hope. No, I'm all for it. Yeah, well. You put it out there. If somebody calls me, I'm, I'm down. Yeah. You can always say, Viv suggested it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I would have any clout or anything. <laughs> <laughs> if someone... Um, has not listened to audiobooks before, what would you tell them? That, um, I think that there are the obvious times when audiobooks are really come in handy is, you know, a long car ride or, or your daily commute. But I think that ultimately, uh, I hope that if the narration's good and you're into it, that it can really... Um, add to the overall experience of reading a book and just give the audiobook a chance because it can, uh, I don't know, I just think when you're listening it can in engage your imagination in a different way. So it's, it's worth the experiment and it uh, hopefully will stick and you'll, you'll become an audiobook nut. They're very addictive. Yeah, I agree, <laughs> I love them. It's a good thing too since you do them all the time. <laughs> very true. <laughs> Kelly, do you have any questions for Yuki? No, I think he answered most of my que most of the things that I was asking about. I did listen to one audiobook not too long ago, and I am from Oregon, and we live in the Willamette Valley, and the narrator didn't pronounce Willamette right, and it drove me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, I've listened to other books where they didn't pronounce the a character's name correct, you know, even after the author told them how to pronounce it. So mm. I'm glad that you do your research because yes. that's helpful. <laughs> one of my one of my tricks is if if it's uh, if the book is in a very specific real location and there's all these street names and and uh, you know 
different sites that are referenced. I'll call the, the Chamber of Commerce in that town. And everybody's just always delighted to hear that their town is in a book. And uh, so I'll get very accurate pronunciations that way. That's my, that's my tip. That's, that's very good. I know up in Oregon we have some really strange towns and names and people don't know how to pronounce them even if they live in Oregon. Yeah. And I'm always wrong. If I just guess, it is always wrong. I've learned, <laughs> I've learned I have to be diligent. Well, that's awesome. Iggy, thank, thank you so much for hanging out with us today and being part of the series. Oh, yes, thank pleasure. you. Thanks for including me. Yep. Well, we're hoping to be doing more of these and that you'll come back. Of course. Thank you. Awesome. Everyone, thank you again for hanging out with us, and we'll be posting this soon. Thank you. Bye. All right. Have a good one. You thank too. You. Bye. Bye.